Today's episode is brought to you by Pond Predator Fishing Charters, Horwood Lake Lodge, Gremlins Custom Baits, Impact Baits, Big Sky Flies and Jigs, and Buddha's Bait Shop. I'm here with Justice, and she'd like to wish you all... Happy Waller Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, baby. I got Dylan, my buddy Red, and of course Zach from Zach, Fishing with Zach. We'd all like to wish you a happy Walleye Wednesday. I'm here with Scott Martin, and we'd like to wish you a happy Walleye Wednesday. Yeah, baby. So I'm yes. here with Gord Pizer, and he'd like to wish you all a happy Walleye Wednesday. Yeah, baby. Yes, sir. And with that, this year's show season has come to an end. Thanks to all of you who took the time to come up and just say hello. The support from this industry has been humbling to say the least and I tell you, I am truly proud to be a part of it. I always say good things happen when good people are involved and this year's show season was a perfect example of that. But enough of the talking, it's time to get to the fishing. At Walleye Wednesday and CFN we fish in all four seasons. And we get to fish some great bodies of water. But more importantly, it's all the people you meet. Yeah, yeah baby. baby. Yeah, baby. On this episode, I ventured down to Windsor, Ontario and the mighty Detroit River. Local captain Nick Overmuck of Pond Predator Fishing Charters was going to introduce me to an old school yet extremely productive technique for fishing walleye on that river. Now I've never tried it before, but after a day out in the water with Captain Nick, I'll be honest with you, I can't wait to do it again. Different, there's different leaders, different size leaders, different size shanks that everybody uses. I make all my own homemade stuff. This is the shank. I make this out of downrigger cable. And I run two clevises because I run two leaders on mine. And I run a, a 40 foot and a 20 foot. These are made out of mono and I buy the cheapest mono you can get. It's cheap, it's stiff. You would never put that on a reel. But I buy it for this because it doesn't curl up, it doesn't knot in the boat. It's a Red Wolf. You buy the paint tire, like $3 a school. And it's got lots of stretch. That's what I like about it. So you don't know, you got no drag, no reel. So you want as much stretch as possible when you're fighting them big fish. The rigging, which is everything. We use lots of different repellers. We got semi clear water. We're going to start with number 11. Particular plug you like using? or uh, All original floating repellers from size 9 to 13 is my number one. That's the handline itself right there. That's, that's an a and handline. That's probably the best ones that are on the market. They're made in Detroit. All of them come from Detroit. This, this whole system is made here in the Detroit River. So what we do, I got my 20 foot, my 40 foot. And I make my own sinkers. It's a pound and a half sinker. The key thing to remember here about this is that this is all measured. Because we're running our, 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 our repellas about six inches off the bottom, right? So if this was off two inches higher, or this was down two inches lower, then everything's not gonna run, it's gonna run different, it's gonna run off. Everything's measured. That's the key thing to make these lures run perfect. Because those walleye, especially this time of year, right now with the water temperature, are extremely lazy and they're not biting. So we wanna run that lure as fast or as slow as, uh, as close to its mouth as possible. A lot of people, when they do this, they run straight up the river. They just put the bow into the current and just troll straight up the river. And, that's a big mistake people make because the fish are laying right on the bottom. And when you're running your lure, this is the fish, here's my lure. You're run, they're running the lures over top of the fish's back, like this. They're gonna catch the odd one, don't get me wrong. They're gonna catch fish, that's why people do it. What people don't realize is if you slide the boat with the current, in and out. Now you got a fish sitting on the bottom, you're going real slow up current, and the lure is now doing this. In front of the, all the fish. You're covering all the bottom, all the fish. And then you find where the school's at. Once you find where the school's at, you catch one, you circle right back, you just stay on top of them the whole time. And that's the difference between catching a few fish and literally a lot of fish. And you've been handlining for how long now, Nick? Oh, I've been handlining since my, with my old man since I was probably seven years old. I didn't get into it, I didn't like it as a kid, eh? Because, you know, it was different, I didn't understand it. Once I became more experienced in fishing on my own, I didn't. I realized that how technical it was and the just the little things that you gotta do to make catch more fish and then I started getting into it a lot more once I realized it was more rewarding. More rewarding, so obviously it comes with a little bit of patience, I'm sure. Oh for sure, yeah. It's a big big learning curve.
Nick Overmuck. What a beautiful Detroit River walleye. And what we do on Walleye Wednesday, Nick? Catch and release. Always release our fish. Happy Walleye Wednesday. Yep, yeah, baby. Yes, sir. He's going. Let's get another one, Scotty. Beautiful Detroit River walleye. As you can see, that female, she's actually spinning eggs. We always like to release our fish. Catch and limit, limit your catch. Practice catch and release every chance you get. And always try and throw these big hens back. Good job, buddy. Yeah, baby. Thanks, Nick. Yes, sir.